So for this one, we're going to find the derivative and then we're gonna plug in negative six. So I am gonna rewrite this equation as x to the negative two. Again, when we divide, that means we're gonna have a negative exponent. And so when we do the power rule, we're gonna bring the negative two down and we subtract one from the exponent. So just be careful when it's negative, when you subtract one, it becomes more negative. And then I'm gonna rewrite that negative two over x cubed. Um, again, the negative exponent means we're going to divide. And then we're going to plug in negative 6. So we're going to put in negative 6 for x. And in all honesty, you could, you could leave it like that. You don't have to reduce. You don't have to simplify. Uh, but I know a lot of you did, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. Negative 6 cubed would be negative 216. And then the negatives are going to cancel, and that reduces to 1 over 108. But again, um, you could have stopped here or here. You know, um, you don't have to simplify it all the way when it's free response like that. But again, you did not need to write the whole equation. It was just asking for um, the derivative at negative six. And then I also want to do number three. And this one was really similar. We want the derivative at zero. So we are going to find f prime and then we're going to plug in zero. So derivative of just x is one. Derivative of exponential is itself. And then there's a chain rule there. We have to chain on the derivative of two x, which is two. And then we're gonna plug in zero. So this would be one minus e to the zero is one, and then times two. The most common mistake I saw on this one is when people came from this line to the next, they didn't bring the one with them. Um, which is just weird that so many people did that. That's just a copy error. So just make sure when you copy from one line to the next that you write everything, um, that you bring it all down to the next line. Um, and so this would be one minus two, which is negative one. All right, and the next one I wanted to look at was nine. This one does ask for an equation, so we're gonna need to write the whole thing. Um, and the point was two pi zero. So we have the point, we just need the slope, and we're gonna need the derivative to get the slope. And this is gonna be a product rule. So it will be the first function, so x, times the derivative of the second, so derivative of sine is cosine, plus the second function times derivative of the first, and derivative of x would just be one. And we're gonna plug two pi into that to get our slope. So if I plug in two pi for x, this first part's just gonna be two pi. And then we're gonna have to do cosine of two pi. So let me draw that on our unit circle. Two pi is the whole way around. So that would be right here, uh, one zero. And cosine is the x value, so that would be one. All right, plus sine of pi over two, sine is the y value, so that would be zero. So this entire second part is gone, that just goes to zero. And so our slope is just two pi. And so this is the point, this is the slope, and we're just gonna put it together into the equation. So y minus zero equals two pi, x minus two pi. So that one um, did ask for the entire equation. And then the last one I wanna make sure I go over is 16C. So it says, find the derivative of f of g of x um, at x equals two. So we're gonna write out the rule and then we're gonna evaluate it at two. And I'll bring the chart up here because we need the chart in order to evaluate it. So since this is a composite function, it's gonna be chain rule. So we do the derivative of the outside, leave the inside alone, and then chain on the derivative of the inside. And then we're gonna evaluate that at two. So we're gonna start right here, do g of two, and whatever we get, we're gonna do f prime of that. So let me bring up the table of values here. We're gonna do g of two, 
So g of 2 is 3. So we know that this part right here is 3. And then we're going to do f prime of that. So we're going to do f prime of 3. This is hard to get all these papers under here. All right, so f prime of 3 is 10. So that first part is going to be 10. All right, times uh, g prime of 2. Again, we're still plugging in 2 here. So g prime of 2. So g prime of 2 is 1. So that second part is just going to be 1. And so that is 10. So those are the ones I wanted to make sure I went over. I'm going to open it up to you now. So you can type in the chat. You can type it to me privately. Um, what else from the test would you guys like to go over? All right, yeah, and someone said 16D, so let's do that one. Sorry, my pencil just ran out of lead, so hold on a second. I'm trying to find another one here. Oh, um, sorry, I had two people right in the chat. I'm sorry, 16D and 16E. Okay, so let me do both of those. All right, so 16D, um, it says find the inverse derivative at negative four. So we're gonna make a chart for f and f prime, and then for, I don't know why I called that g, um, the inverse and the inverse derivative. And whatever lands here is gonna be our answer, and we wanna plug in negative four for x. So if we can put negative four there, where else can I put negative four, guys? What other column is that gonna be able to go in? Good, that's going to go under the F column. Um, because if they're inverses, the points are going to be just reversed. So now we need to look for this on the table. So let me bring the table back up. We're looking in the F column for a negative 4. So here is the F column. I'm looking for negative 4, which is right here. And so my point is 4, negative 4. And my derivative, the f prime, um, is going to be negative 7. So I have the point 4, negative 4, and then the derivative is negative 7. So the point is going to get reversed. So if we have 4, negative 4, this is going to be just reversal of that. And then for my answer, I just have to reciprocate this. So that would be negative 1, 7. All right, and then 16E said write an equation. So we need a point and a slope. So it says write the equation um, tangent to G at one. So our X value is gonna be one and we're gonna get the point and the slope from the chart. So it said tangent to G. So we need to make sure we look at the G column. So this is gonna be G of one that goes right here. So G of one is four. So that's going to be my point, 1, 4. And then the slope comes from the derivative. So that's g prime of 1. So um, bringing the table back up here, I'm sorry, I'm not trying to make you seasick bringing it back and forth. I just have to show it to you. Um, g prime of 1 is 9. So our slope is 9. So this is the point, 9 is the slope. And we'll just write it in the equation. So y minus 4 equals 9, x minus 1. All right, what else from the test would you guys like to go over? All right, 15. All right, so this is a chain rule that has three links in the chain. The most outside is the fifth power, and then inside of that is cotangent, and then inside of that is 3x. So we're going to do the fifth power first. So the 5 comes down, and it's going to drop to a 4. And then the next link in the chain, derivative of cotangent is negative cosecant squared. And then the last link in the chain, the derivative of 3x is 3. 
And I wanted you to just leave it like that. You don't have to simplify this down at all. I wanted to see like all three steps to that thing. Um, but this is just one term. It's just all stuff being multiplied. So if you did simplify it, um, if you're one of those people that did do that and you wanted to see what it looks like simplified, you'd bring this negative out front and then multiply the five and the three together. So it would be negative 15 and then times the rest of this. So there's really not much you can do to make it any better anyhow. All right, what else um, from the test would you guys like to go over? All right, number four. And feel free to type in the chat there, guys, if there's some other ones that you want to look at. All right, y equals arc sine of 7x. So your rule for arc sine derivative is one over square root one minus x squared. But in place of x, we're going to put seven x, and then there's going to be a chain rule. So y prime equals one over big square root one minus. Now, if you square seven x, we're putting the seven x right here. We have to square that. So that would be 49 x squared. And then we have to chain on the derivative of 7x, which would just be 7. And I'm just going to go ahead and write that in the numerator. If you wrote it like times 7 off to the side, that's totally fine too. Um, if it was a multiple choice question, you would see it written in the numerator like that. Though. All right, what else, guys? Do you want to pick any more? seven. All right, so it says find the instantaneous rate of change. That means the derivative um, at pi over four. So we are going to find the derivative and then we're going to plug in pi over four. So this derivative is going to be a chain rule. Ln is the outside function, cosine is the inside function. So derivative of ln is rational. So that would be one over whatever's inside. And then chain on the derivative of cosine, which is negative sine. And so I'm going to rewrite that as negative sine of x over cosine of x. And I had some people go even further and write it as negative tangent of x, which was awesome. Sine over cosine is tangent. Um, so if you did that, cool. I'm glad you know that identity. Um, we don't have to do that, though. I'm just going to go ahead and stop you. But that would be negative tangent. All right, and then we're going to evaluate that at pi over 4. So for pi over 4 on your unit circle, both sides of the triangle are root 2 over 2. Sine is the y value, cosine is the x value. In this case, they're the same thing. So we're going to end up with negative square root of 2 over 2 over square root of 2 over 2. Um, that looks like a mess, but anything over itself is going to be 1. So essentially, like all that cancels out, and we just have negative 1 as our final answer. 